honor your mother and your father. This, brothers and sisters, was the only verse from scripture that I ever remember my mum quoting. As it turns out, my dad only ever quoted one verse from scripture as well. His verse was, you can't serve both God and money. Interestingly, both quotes have some relevance to today's readings. In my journey towards God and ultimately the priesthood, mum would often quote that verse to me as a basis for me continuing to be obedient to her as a good son. I suspect underlying this was her fear of what following Christ would entail, a direction which would essentially mean the end of what she believed was the right direction for my life. That is, good job, normal life, marriage and children. Brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel reading, we see the third of the three Sunday Gospel readings from chapter 10 of the Gospel of Matthew, described by scholars as the Mission Sermon. In the first week, we saw Jesus' initial motivation for the formation of his church, how his aims would be achieved in the church, who in the church would be sent out, and what they would need to do. Last week, Jesus prepared the apostles for the likely personal cost for them of leading Jesus' church and proclaiming his teaching. Today, Jesus claims first place in the hearts and lives of the twelve apostles, a place that entails carrying a cross. He finishes by stating the implications of their faithfulness and for all who participate in the mission. Brothers and sisters, let's look at today's Gospel reading more closely. Firstly, Jesus tells the twelve, Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. When my mum quoted the fourth commandment, honour your mother and father, she was speaking the truth. But she ignored the fact that there are three greater commandments which come before it, all relating to our relationship with God and the need for God to come first, even before the ones we love most, whether they be parents, spouses, children or friends. To be a faithful follower of Jesus, the apostles first and all of us who follow them need to put all our loved ones second to God. These first words by Jesus in today's Gospel naturally lead to his next words. Anyone who does not take his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. This discussion that Jesus has with his apostles is the first time that he mentions the cross in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. It is at this critical juncture that he puts before the apostles and the disciples and all of us who have since followed in their footsteps that to follow Jesus entails a cross and that all need to be prepared to lose everything for him. Brothers and sisters, are we prepared to lose everything for Jesus? Are we truly prepared to take up our cross in order to be faithful to our Christian calling? Having been challenged to be prepared to lose everything for Jesus, for the gospel, for the truth, Jesus then tells the apostles the implications of them being faithful to his call. He says, Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and those who welcome me welcome the one who sent me. Brothers and sisters, we are called to be witnesses to Christ so that those who do not know God may be inclined, because of all our actions, to welcome us and listen to the message. When they welcome us, they are in effect inviting Jesus and the Father into their lives. This is a great responsibility. Can we think of situations where we have been welcomed by those who do not know God because we gave a faithful witness to Christ? Finally, Jesus tells the apostles about the reward their benefactors will receive for supporting the Christian mission. All those who welcome the first disciples and apostles and all those who welcome us today because we are Christians will receive a reward from God who can't help immediately blessing all who do good, even if it is simply giving a cup of cold water to a Christian who is thirsty. Let us not forget God blessing the Shunammites with a baby that she never had, simply for being hospitable to the man of God, Elisha. So, brothers and sisters, let us put everything in our lives into the correct order. Let us love our mothers and fathers and children, but not more than God. Let us take up our crosses and be prepared to accept suffering for the sake of the gospel, even to the shedding of our lives. Let us do all of this for the one who did so much for us out of his great love. And in doing this, we will help rebuild the church, the kingdom of God, and only then can our joy truly be complete.